When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, they will be called the children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and utter every kind of evil falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just say amen. Amen. Amen again. Amen. Several years ago, I was at St. Francis of Rome. St. Leonard, and I think it was either Sister Carmelita or Sister Rose, they asked me to have the mass with the children of an old saint. And I loved children's mass. Uh, they were very engaged and they were all dressed up in their favorite saints. And so I went up there and I asked the children, I said, Tell me, who is a saint? What is a saint? And those kids, if you ask a question, they are ready to answer this answer. Should not try to answer this question, who is a saint, what is a saint? One little boy says, a saint, to be a saint, you have to be dead. <laughs> I said, yes, yes, you have to be dead because uh, that uh, takes away the chances of ever sinning. So the church waits until you are dead, and then they make you a saint. That's a good answer. Another uh, hand shot up and said, I tell you what, what, what does it mean to be a saint? Well, to be a saint, um, you can't make yourself a saint, the Pope has to make you a saint. I said, oh yeah, that's an interesting one. It is called the beatification process where we go through studies and uh, want to become a saint. Another answer shot up, he says, to be a saint, you must perform a miracle. And these kids did their homework. And I'm giving all this, and I'm like, we're rolling with it. We are rolling in church. I'm like, this is great. There was one little boy uh, in front of the church, right there. Uh, his name is Bryce. Uh, his mom, Michelle, was staying next to him. And Bryce couldn't wait. Uh, and I was like, okay, Bryce, what does it mean to be a saint? He's very late for the He stood up and he says, well, there is this thing called the NFL draft. <laughs> He is a saint because he has represented that he is a friend of God. 
He is a saint because he is shining a light in a place where darkness reigns. For that makes him a saint. I say, Father, wait one second. What miracles has he performed? He says, well, you don't spend 27 years in jail and come out with a smile. That is a miracle. <laughs> he changed. I tell you what, well, these Jesuit priests that was He totally, <laughs> he totally changed my understanding of saints. And then he called us to begin to reflect on saints. Yes, it is wonderful. It is great to think of the saints that the church has given to us. But can we also look in our own family and find a saint there? Somebody who has stood up when they have, knocked, they have been knocked down time and time again and they still find time to love. Father said this, Nelson Mandela is a saint because he got out, out of jail with a smile on his face and then he said this, he told the people of Africa, let us let bygones be bygones. And people were ready to rise in arms. He says, let bygones be bygones. That's the saint. So today as we gather to celebrate this feast of all saints, all souls, the first question is, who is your favorite saint? Yes, we can go look into church history and find those saints that cannot commit any sin anymore. But is there a saint today whom you can look at and say, that person speaks God to me? I've often spoken of mom. And I think she's a saint because you don't pay six boys and one girl and not be a saint. Because time and time again, she has loved and loved and loved and received so little sometimes. That is a saint. A saint is somebody who shines the light of God in a place where darkness reigns. Yes, there are saints out there. What about in this church? Do we have saints? Are there people who bring God to others? I say, this church at Wapuri is filled with holy men and women of God. The saints of God who sing God's praises. For to be a saint, sometimes we think, yes, uh, somebody doesn't need to make any more mistakes. But maybe that is misplaced. Or maybe that is true. But it is also true that we have saints among us. And I am a big proponent of this. I do not want to eulogize somebody when they are dead. Amen. What if we try to eulogize somebody when they are still alive? Point out the things that they do well so that they can continue to do those things well. So that they may realize that even in their struggle, they too are saints. Today we mix two fists. Yes, this feast that we celebrate that maybe you and I are also saints of God in every respect. But we also gather to celebrate the pain of losing someone. Several years ago, it was two years ago, I was called to a Norton hospital. Miss Connie from there was having surgery. And as I was visiting with Connie, her husband is standing right next to me, where I went to anoint her before surgery. She then called it while I was there. I'm running out of the, uh, the, the, world, uh, the room looking for a nurse. I went to the nurse station. There was no one in the nurse station. Her husband is trying whatever I my she was doing. Like we are all frantic because she is calling. And they, that, that we did this for a and we were panicking. Lo and behold, the nurse comes rushing in, and uh, I'm standing there with all the boys, and they, they, the boys said, wait, get up. The guard was out, and the resuscitated us, she came up. I was like, I'm going to leave, because the doctors are doing what they're doing. So I left, and I came going back about two days later. I said, and she sat up, she saw me, and she says, oh, why did you hold me there? You are, oh my gosh. And then we talked about 
talked about how holding, and she says, well, are you going to anoint me now? I said, yes, I'm going to anoint you, but what happened? I said, well, after I died. <laughs> now, she's got an only score, she's a woman. I said, I died, and while I went up to heaven, and lo and behold, I saw mama there. She was out in the field there, sitting there, and she was smoking a cigarette. You still got work to do. And I said, Mama, I want to stay here with you. And I, she sent me back. She, Mama sent me back. So Pony comes back. And then she, I was at the second person she told this story. First, she told her doctor. And doctor listened very carefully. And after she finished saying her experience, doctor taps on the shoulder and says, Hey, when you go back, make sure you tell your mama to stop smoking. <laughs> Then, for me, as he was telling the story, I said, God, you were gone for five seconds. How could you have all this experience in five seconds? He says, but it happened. And she came back, a very changed person. And she says to me, it is not that far away, Father. And the only reason I have come back is that I've got things to do, but I have no idea what those things are. I love that. The only reason I was sent back is that there are things that I'm supposed to do and I have no idea what those things are. The only difference there is between the church militant, that is the church that is in this queue, and the church whom we light candles with, is those people have done everything that God has asked them to do. They have hugged every person God ever asked them to hug. They have forgiven every person that God has ever asked them to forgive. Sometimes I struggle with this because my father died way too young. And I say, there were still things for him to do. But why did God shows up and said, I gave daddy a mission. He accomplished the mission. I called him home. Some of us accomplish that mission of God in our twenties, and we are called home. In our thirties, others don't get a chance to even be born alive. Part of our faith is understanding this: that you and I are created for a purpose. And until we have answered the call of God in its fullness, we don't know. And that also is our joy. We call it the celebration of that moment. Yes, death has a sting. I always wish my father was still alive. I always wish you would fix my tie. But I also have to believe that somehow we accomplished God's mission. And if we were to ask our brothers or sisters whom we light the candle for, what would they say to us? Maybe they would say to us as well, you too have a restaurant, Mama. You too have a mission to complete. So, the church military <coughs> us. We pray for the church triumphant, those who have gone before us. But the church triumphant, those who have gone before us, also turn around and pray for us. The Catholic faith stands very strong with this. That in death, life does not end. In death, life is changed. They live. It's very interesting when Father Will was reading the names. It wasn't just names. If you listen, you hear their present sentences. You feel their comfort. You feel their prayers. Let us continue to pray, not only today, but this whole month.
We pray for those who have gone before us. We remind ourselves of that, that we are a church that also celebrates eschatology, the end time. 